Alright guys, it's Bill here from ZaltechReviews.com um, I reviewed uh, the dive watch from 960 watches uh, a few weeks ago now and he, he did mention that when I reviewed that that he was going to send me his latest creation, the field watch he also sent me his pilot watch as well there you go uh, but I'm not going to review the pilot's watch, but I'll, I'll mention it. It's, it's way too big for me. It's obviously a, like a pure 100% traditional pilot's watch, but it obviously back in uh, the 20th century during World War One, uh, no World War One, World War Two. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you know, they were all designed to be big because they were meant to fit over a, a flight suit and whatnot. I, I can't even put this on wrist, it's that big. I look like a blooming six-year-old that's nicked his dad's, his dad's watch shift when I put that on. However, I'm not, as I say, I'm not reviewing that today. I'm reviewing the, the field watch and this is the one that I was, out of the three watches, the dive, the field and the pilots. It's the field watch I was really keen on looking at. And no, just because it's a white dial, it's because it's a field watch, obviously. And I love field watches. But it's done like nothing else I've seen before. Right, anyway. Oh, and by the way, this has got an absolute cracking backstory. Normally backstories you get about watches are just market and drivel. Aye, this one is... It actually, I can relate to this, the backstory, uh, because I'm in the same position. I think I'm just a wee bit older than Chris, the owner of 960, but obviously I had grandparents and all that that were in, took part in World War Two and all that, so I can relate to it. Um, but I'll talk about that later anyway. Right, play the intro. Right guys, as I was saying, the backstory, I mean I've got the backstory here as a written part for my website because I wanted to add it to the dedicated landing page for this watch on my website as well as putting this review and all that on there. So if you want to have a look, I'm going to read it to you anyway because I think it is a good backstory and I like it. Anyway, I'll just read it as... It's been written basically from Chris. So if there's any uh, grammar errors, well, it's no me, right? It's Chris, so you can blame him. I don't think there is anyway, because I've had a good look through it anyway. Right, this is what it says. Uh, this project has a very personal feel for us, as we wanted to pay homage to World War II codebreakers and personnel who intercepted and decoded messages. Why, you might ask? Well, it's very simple, um, especially as a child growing up in the 80s, as a lot of our grandparents were involved in the war in many different ways. I knew my nan was in the, the military, but I never knew a great deal or bothered to ask. As a young kid, it seemed irrelevant uh, to me. She never mentioned it either, as her generation just did what was needed. Um, it was relatively recently, in the past few years, uh, that we have pieced things together and found further bits of information. It turns out that Manan was part of a team who intercepted messages and enabled the sinking of the turbots Battleship on the 12th of November 1944. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, but anyway. Annoyingly, I regret not asking her more questions on a daily basis, but I do walk down to the local military cemetery where she rests and have a wee chat with her when I want to clear my head. I like that. 
This watch is in honour of not only my nan, but every other person who gave the ever, absolutely everything in those very tough times across the globe. Uh, we have a compass bezel and red hands to create the compass feel. Uh, and we decided on numbers and letters as a salute to the code breakers. Uh, it's not a common look, but then again, it wasn't a common situation. The, if you look at the dial there, you can see the word dot. That's in recognition of Morse code, i.e. dot dash. But also to a great lady who was called Dorothy, i.e. my nan. I, I like that backstory. That I mean, it does put the watch in... That, that's why, it's no the only reason I really like this watch. Oh, and I meant to say, uh, this video is sponsored by 960 and they will be sending me uh, a field, a field watch once of you know, because this one's gone to another reviewer. I think I'm the first one to review this, so big thanks to Chris for sending it to me first. Um, aye, but the other reason I like this watch so much is I've never seen nothing else like it, and it's totally unique. I really do like it, so spoiler alert. You've got, you get the canvas roll, by the way, and I'll not bother opening it up, but there's another four NATO straps in there. They all come in different colours and whatnot. In fact, sod it, I'll show you. It's a nice canvas roll, this to you, a nice military feel, and it actually smells... Smells like a fucking... For those that have been in the army and you were issued a Bergen. Or webbing, the old canvas style. No so much new, because you get chest webbing and all that these days, and they're super light. But when I was in the army, and I, I believe when Chris was in the army as, uh, as well, you got issued this kind of heavy duty canvas bergen and webbing that went round your back and your sides rather than across your front and your, on your chest. Uh, and that's what it smells like. Anyway, as I was saying, inside you get NATO straps. There's also spare uh, quick release as well. Aye, oh, spare pins and that. I'm not sure if you get that. I'm pretty sure you do, because it costs buttons to put that in. Uh, aye. you got two there, one there, and there's another one in here, I'm sure. Aye. I think that's a good match. I'm not a big fan of NATO, so I'm not even going to bother putting it on the watch. But good quality NATO straps anyway. I think that's a good match colour-wise. You know, with the green accent and the, the field vibe. The black DLC hardware and all that. They've all got black DLC hardware. And they're all signed as well on the, the buckles. Every one of them, I've just looked. They're all done. That's a leather one as well. Old school kind of leather needle. Anyway, get that out of the road. Oh, I meant to say, by the way, the pilot's watch comes with a slightly different roll. But I just thought I'd mention it anyway. I don't even know what the price is or that. But it's fucking massive. So, I am not even going to bother putting that in my wrist because it looks stupid. Let's talk about the watch. Let's zoom in a wee bit. Right. Price. This is launching soon and it's no Kickstarter launch, by the way. I was asking Chris uh, last night because I thought it was going to be, but it's not. They do it um, the old school way. The watches will be available online on their own website and you buy from them direct. I think the launch date is some it's either June or July. I think it's July. But you you won't be having to sit and wait for months and months for this thing to turn up like you do on Kickstarter. Basically when you buy it, 
that'll be sent to you. So, lovely jubbly, I like that. Shows her the company's commitment rather than going down the Kickstarter route. Uh, right, aye. Price £300. I think for the specs and for the build quality of the watch, it's worth every penny. Uh, the dimensions, uh, case diameter is 41.7mm. These are my own measurements, by the way. The thickness is 11.4mm. The lug to lug, 476 and it has a 20mm lug width. Um, the strap that it comes on is a, a canvas strap. And it's got a nice taper to it. It's nice and comfortable as well. And it actually, I've been wearing this watch on this supplied strap, and I found it very comfortable. Not stiff whatsoever. So, nine six zero branded and that on the underside. The movement inside it is a Miyota nine zero one five. Great choice. So it's a four hertz movement that runs at twenty eight thousand eight hundred. Uh, vibrations per hour. It has 24 joules, uh, it's hackable, it's self winding and has a 42 hour power reserve. The case itself is 316L stainless steel with a matte black DLC coating. If you don't know what DLC is, like diamond like carbon. So extremely tough, just what you want for a field watch. Oh that reminds me, um, it's a wee shout out for 960 is if you're no I'll put a picture up and it might jog your memory but uh, Jimmy DeVille actually wears these 960 watches and he's hard on his watches he's, he wears the diver and the field I believe I think he's got a field I'm not sure but he wears the diver a lot I know that much if you don't know who Jimmy DeVille is uh, he used to be do all the background work like, you know, mechanics and all this, the rest of the stuff for Top Gear. Everybody knows Top Gear. And he does a lot of other stuff as well. I've seen him loads of times on the TV. Anyway, that's just a wee claim to fame for 960 watches. Um, right, where was I? What was I talking about? Ah, the bezels, um, the same. It's made of 316L stainless steel with the black DLC coating. The insert on it is sapphire, which is unusual, quite shiny. You can see it there, the light reflecting on it. Uh, I thought they would have used, like, you know, ceramic maybe, like a matte finish to go with the black DLC. But, I, I mean, I like sapphire, no complaints. No complaints whatsoever. And it's the bezel as well. It's 120 click unidirectional and it's a compass bezel. Obviously, north, south, east, west, blah, blah, blah. It's got a great action and as you can see, it lines up absolutely perfectly. I'll let you hear the action. It's nice. No back play whatsoever. And it's easy to turn, easy to grip, and as I said, it lines up bang on perfect. If it doesn't line up bang on perfect, it's broken, and it needs fixed. So when you get a watch and it is lined up perfectly, Seiko, listen in. Uh, aye, when it lines up perfectly, I'm like, happy days. It's a, I think it's the first thing I check when I get a watch in, no matter what brand or who it's from. If it's got a rotating bezel, I'll make sure it lines up. Does the chapter ring line up? Does everything else line up? And I'm very happy when it does line up. <clears throat> if it's misaligned or out just half a click, I'm like, fucking... Do you know, companies don't realise that they're sending it for review. Do you think I'm just going to bypass that? Anyway, <clears throat> if it was my watch company and I was sending anything out for review, I wouldn't just grab it off the shelf, send it. I'd take the friggin' watch out of the box and go over it with a fine tooth comb, 
to make sure everything is perfect for the review. That's just me, maybe I'm just a bit of a OCD anal fucking bastard. Who knows? Uh, right, what my see I'm fucking rattling on about a lot of shit. Uh, right, the dial, it's a full loom dial, which kind of shocked me, right? Because this is marketed as a field watch. Now, I'm not in the army anymore, but I can, I had this kind of wee scenario in my head earlier. Right, I've got a field watch on, it's got the green kind of tactical strap, and it's got a full loom dial. Can you imagine it? You're sitting on your shelf scrape on guard at three o'clock in the morning, now, you start to hallucinate when see it, like, if you're doing this. I know I did. I remember when I was on, I was in stag once, and I was sat in a shell scrape, freezing cold, soaking wet, and you start to hallucinate on things and shapes that are in front of you, right? And I'm no kidding, I thought, because I was told that during this exercise, right, there was a company that was portraying our enemy and they were going to be attacking. Now, I thought, oh, it's three o'clock in the morning. They're not going to attack at three o'clock in the morning, are they? It's going to be like first light before they attack. So I was thinking, right, and I was staring out into, sp into the, like the fields and that, right? And I swear to God, I was that close to opening fire, right? And do you know what it was? A fucking cow. But because it was so far away, all I seen was a silhouette and it was moving, but slowly. I thought, that's a fucking enemy. But you, can you imagine, I'm sat there, right, with this field watch on and it's got a full loom dial. But there's a, there's a cunt there, look, like, him with a fucking watch. Open fire! <laughs> anyway, it was just a wee scenario that was in my head where I was sitting wearing the watch last night. I thought it was quite funny. Because you didn't get full uh, full loom dials on field watches, but I mean nowadays I'm not in the army, obviously, and I I love a fight dial, as everybody knows, and full loom, fine. So I'm glad that it's full loom. Um, right, anyway, I feel the uh, cursed. Oh, I let me explain a wee bit more about the the dial. Because as you can see, it's got north, south, east, west on the, the bezel, right? Then, on like the Arabics, or what you think is Arabics, the even numbers, right? You've obviously, you've got 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Then you're looking at it and going, fuck's all this? Because I know I did when it first arrived. <coughs> oh, excuse me. But then you look at it, right? It's a combination. It's like yin and yang kind of thing, right? You've got the numbers there on the outside, right? 12, 2, 4, blah, blah, blah. Then you've got an O for 1, right? T for 3. Oh, my fucking lights went out. Bastard! F for 5, S for 7, N for 9, E for 11. Then on the inner... Oh, I need to keep my hands out the road so you can see the dial because my wee spotlights went out. Uh, on the 24 hour, like inner numbers and that, you think, right, here we go again. Um, you've got 13 at 1, then you got, it basically reverses the roles of what the outer track is. So you've got 13, 15, 17, 19, 21, 23. Then on the even numbers, you've got the letters standing for uh, the 24 hour equivalent, like 2, which is 14. So there's an F. And so it goes on 16, um, 18, 20, T for 28, and double T for 22 at 10. And then to make things even more weird, no weird, but different. As you've got a colour match date wheel at 12. That really threw me when it first came in. Because I knew the... I, I wasn't... Because I get tons of watches sent to me, right? And there's certain aspects of the spec that will stick in my head. 
So when I know, when I know when I open it, I know what I'm kind of looking at. And for the, when I opened it and I looked at the watch, I'm like, uh, I think this had a fucking date on it. And I looked at three and I'm like, uh, 15th? It's not the 15th. What the fuck's 15 for? Then I looked at the six and it had an E. I'm like, oh, the fuck? Where's the date? And it took me a fucking few seconds to go, oh, it's like 12. Now I've seen that before. But I do like it. And once you, but as, as I say, when I first looked at it and I'm looking at all these markings and I'm going, what the fuck? What is all this about? It's just this random letters and numbers. But obviously, once you realise what they all stand for and how it works, like vice versa on the inner and outer, you're like, oh, I like that. And it doesn't take any, it's not like some of these other unique watches that come in and you're like, what time is it? Well, well, Fuck it, I don't know. I can't work out the time in this thing. But with this one, it's still got your basic, you know, how it, easy to tell the time. You know, like, right now, it's 22. Fine, fair enough. So, uh, one of the reasons I really like it. Uh, let me show you the case back. Case back's polished. Don't know why they polished it, but it's... It's still nice. It's nicely etched in that, and it's got basic specs around the edges. Uh, I'll have, this is a prototype obviously, but it'll have a unique serial number there. Uh, and it's got the, uh, like a, a really nicely etched logo. That's 960 logo in the middle there. Oh, good. Right, let's move on. Uh, aye, the loom that's on this, on the dial itself, or the, the full loom part, it's Swiss Super Luminova C1. Uh, and on the hands and bezel markings, uh, it's BGW9. I'll show you a loom shot in a wee bit. Um, the strap I've already mentioned, canvas, with the black DLC, uh, buckle and tang. It is signed, it's just difficult to see. Let me see. Yeah. Poor kids. No. Alright, it's a nice strap, nice stitching, well put together. And it's no like any other canvas straps that I've tried recently. Where they're like as stiff as a board. This one, it's really soft. It really is. Dead comfortable. And it's no mega long either. If you've got like an eight and a half inch wrist or anything bigger, I would, or even bigger than an eight inch wrist, I would look elsewhere or put one of your rain straps on it. Uh, but that's one of the reasons I don't like two piece straps majority of the time. It's because companies have to, you know, take into consideration that this has got to fit so many different wrist sizes but I've got a six and three quarter inch wrist so majority of straps that I come in I've got, you get this fucking stupid big excess part that flaps about in the wind and catches on like your desk and that and your clothes when you're moving about and I hate it I, it's, I like bracelets right but for a field watch I'd stick on some like I didn't like needles either because of the excess material, I'd put or uh, like a a neck uh, man manky designs elastic strap or Erica's original strap, twenty mil lug width on this, so easy to get one. Just put a plain black one on, and that'd be perfect. Uh, I don't have a black Erica's, or all oh, mine's are in twenty two, and my Erica's is blue and white. So that would look stupid on this. Well, I suppose it would look. I'm not changing it anyway. Because this has got to go uh, to another reviewer pretty shortly. Coffee, I bet it's fucking freezing already. Ah, oh, it's fucking cold. See, too busy talking, man. I forgot about my coffee. I'll make a fresh one after this. Um, 
sapphire crystal it's a flat sapphire which is a good choice because it does keep the thickness right down and this does wear superb on wrist as I say it's only 11.4mm thick and that's include that's with the case back middle of the case back to the centre of the sapphire 11.4 that's well good I like that um, 100 metres of water resistance <coughs> case back I've already mentioned that screw down uh, the crown screw down as well and signed and it's six mil. I think they could have made that a wee bit bigger, maybe a seven mil. As you can see the wee logo there. I think I mean it's still easy to grip and operate and that, so I'm kinda of nitpicking, I'm just talking about uh just my preference really. I like a big oversized crown, as long as it's no stupidly big, you know. I think seven mil is a kinda of sweet spot for a crown size. Um, but anyway, the weight of this watch on this strap that you can see here is 91.6 grams. Uh, as I said earlier on, you can buy it direct from 960 watches. I'll leave a link in the description. It's got a uh, 12 months warranty. I would have liked to have seen a wee bit more. Maybe two years. But what can you do? Um, and as I say, there's also the military style watch roll that I showed at the beginning. There's my fucking dog button. I fucking knew it. I wouldn't get through one video without the dog chipping in. Uh, right guys, I'll give you a quick wrist shot. There you go. On the supplied canvas strap as I said I've not tucked it on or anything but you can see there's still a, I mean I've got a 6 and 3 quarter inch wrist as I mentioned and there's still what oh, 1, 2, 5 holes extra there but it's no hang on a sec it's no made uh, overly big so I reckon you'll be fine up to Eight inches. Right, eight inches before you start running out of holes and whatnot. Black hardware, as I mentioned. Uh, let's see what it sits on wrist like. Sits great on wrist. Know what I mean? No, no overhang on my wrist or anything like that. Right. I really like this watch and I, I really admire the first the attention to detail on the build quality. It is really good. Um no sharp edges anywhere, really good overall. I can't find anything wrong with it. And I really like the dial. I think it's uh, really nice. I I, I mean as I say I've looked at I've got the pilot watch here. And I reviewed their diver. I think the field watch is the pick of the three. It is for me anyway. I think it's superb. Um, highly recommended, that's for sure. Let, before I go, uh, let me throw these lights off and I'll give you a loom shot. There you go, guys. As you can see, full loom dial. Uh, has a, a kind of green glow and you've got BGW9 which obviously glows blue on the hands and the bezel um, and the, the loom's actually pretty good and I believe that it'll be improved even more on the production models so win-win anyway that's it for today guys um, big thanks to Chris for sending out the field and the pilot's watch. You know, I'm, I'm not going to review it. Uh, I do really like the the field watch. So, uh, thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe as well if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Toodles.